Archaeology is one of the most important sciences that sheds light on our past. But what if our past is not quite the way we imagine it to be? Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. Ancient Roman Boxing Gloves Leather gloves were discovered in the summer of 2017 on the territory of the ancient Roman fort of Vindalanda, located south of Hadrian's Wall, a defensive fortification built around 122-128 AD. Accordingly, the gloves should be about 2,000 years old. Together with gloves, scientists found swords, shoes, and bath towels. Archaeologists say that this is supposedly the only surviving example of gloves. Archaeologists believe that they were used not for fighting, but for sparring. The gloves were well preserved, as they had lain all this time under the concrete floor and were not exposed to oxygen. The Most Colorful Tomb of Ancient Egypt in Egypt, many tombs have been found, but never so bright, with such well-preserved colors. The more surprising is the fact that it is as much as 4,400 years old. The tomb belongs to a certain official from the time of the construction of the pyramids, named Kuvi. The writings on the walls call him the pharaoh's only friend, the warden of the great house, one of the ten greatest in Upper Egypt. In other words, he was an extremely noble man. But the most majestic thing in the tomb is not the dignitary, but the paintings that accompany him on his last journey. They depict sailing ships, peasants working in the fields, and incredibly intricate designs. How exactly the Egyptians managed to keep colors vibrant for almost 5,000 years is still a mystery. The book was returned to the English Library. The building could be repaired with a penalty for all the deadlines. But of course, no one will find the violator, and the book, published at the beginning of the 17th century, has now become a real diamond in the collection of books. The book now belongs to the Cathedral of Saints Peter and Paul in the English city of Sheffield. The temple was built in the 1280s and has long been a popular library among the locals. The library has not long been gone, and the clergy now do not even know where it could be. The publication that was handed over to the temple is called Faith and Practice of the Church of England. Judging by the notes, it was issued back in 1708, but the reader turned out to be so unscrupulous that he never gave it up until the end of his life. As a result, the work spent centuries on the shelf in families of several generations until three centuries later it was decided to return it. The return was made by a resident of Wales. The book had been with her godmother for many years and it was a dying wish to return it to the library. Skull with traces of complex brain surgery the remains of four women and six men were discovered at the archaeological site of Paleo Castro. Examination of the bones showed that these people led a physically difficult lifestyle and received many injuries. Judging by the nature of the burials, they all belonged to the upper class. The analysis revealed very serious cases of injuries received by both men and women. These injuries were treated surgically and orthopedically by a very experienced doctor, a surgeon with great experience. We believe that it was a military doctor. The skull of one of the buried people attracted particular attention of the researchers. A detailed analysis showed that the surgeon performed a complex brain surgery. The nature of the intervention indicates the severity of the injury. There was practically no chance of survival for this person. However, the doctor attempted to save him. He was probably a very important person for the population of Paleo Castro. Archaeologists have been able to obtain accurate medical, surgical, and paleopathological data about this unusual surgery and the tremendous efforts of the surgeon. He was determined that infection was the likely reason for the surgery. It was also determined that the man died during or shortly after the surgery. Foreign Human Skulls there are many claims of skulls with horns, however, very few of them have been independently investigated. Although specific skin tumors may look like horns, they are not part of the skeleton and are more like nails than horns. According to stories, horned skulls appeared in Pennsylvania and then mysteriously disappeared before they could be examined by experts. 
giant emerald vessel. The real treasures include not only the jewelry of kings and noble ladies, among them there are things of incredible beauty that cannot be worn or used in everyday life by a modern person. These items include an emerald vessel that once belonged to Emperor Ferdinand II. The emerald vessel is a fairly large, irregular-shaped container with a miniature domed lid. For decoration, gold animal with small inclusions of processed green stone was used. The metallic pattern wraps up the vessel and gives it an even more solemn, rich appearance. An emerald with a size of 2,680 carats was needed to make this work of art. The giant was found in the Musa mines located in Colombia. Unfortunately, we cannot trace this moment. It remains means only to assume that the emerald of unprecedented size was bought by Rudolf II himself. The stone is mentioned in the inventory of the imperial collection for 1616. Found a trace of the legendary meteorite Scientists have found a giant crater in Southeast Asia, which is 18 kilometers long and 13 kilometers wide. It is located in a volcanic field in the southeastern part of Laos. About 800,000 years ago, a real stone monster 1.9 kilometers wide collided with the Earth. Fragments from the impact scattered over 10% of the planet's surface. Scientists have found these fragments in the form of glass beads, known as tactites, many times in Asia, Australia, and even in Antarctica. But until until now, researchers have not been able to find the place where the meteorite hit. The search continued for over a century. Scientists have proven that a giant crater is buried underground, which is why the crash site was so difficult to find. When a meteorite hits the Earth, it melts the stones, scattering their splashes for thousands of kilometers. Cooling down, these drops harden and turn into what scientists call tactites. By examining the location of tactites, scientists can roughly determine the impact site of the meteorite that created them. America was discovered by the ancient Romans. There is no longer any doubt that the first Europeans to set foot on the American continent were not members of the expedition of Christopher Columbus, but the Vikings, Scandinavian navigators who first discovered Iceland, then Greenland, and then landed in North America, where they were even able to establish a colony. But archaeological finds on Oak Island, located near the Canadian province of Nova Scotia, can turn the whole story of discovery of the New World. Old. We are talking about a gladius sword, which a group of amateur archaeologists, led by Joe Van Pelitza, discovered during excavations. The chemical analysis of the sword confirmed its similarity with samples of Roman weapons from Europe. According to archaeologists, there is no doubt that a discovered sword was made by ancient Roman craftsmen and is genuine. The handle of the gladius, which apparently depicts one of the ancient Roman heroes, suggests that we are not dealing with a standard sword sword of a Roman legionnaire, but a gift item that was awarded for certain merits. Interestingly, the sword was originally discovered back in 1940 by local fishermen when it accidentally got tangled in a net. Only recently, the fisherman's family decided to give it to archaeologists. It turns out that some ancient expedition was able to swim across the Atlantic Ocean and reach the shores of America. Perhaps someone from the team accidentally dropped the sword into the water where the ship was wrecked, and the Gladius remained lying on the seabed for many years. Underground Palace, Thousand and One Columns the oldest and second-largest underground reservoir in Istanbul from Byzantine times is remarkable not only for its architecture, but also for many mysteries, which only become more numerous over time. The Philoxena Cistern is located in the Binbar Direct District of the Fatih City District, 200 meters from the Column of Constantine, 150 meters from another luxurious cistern of Theodosius II, and 100 meters from the Sultanahmet Tramstop. 
true, the entrance to the reservoir is hardly noticeable and you can accidentally pass by. In the Ottoman Empire, the already inactive structure was called Bimber Direk, 1001 columns. In fact, initially, there were 224 columns in the cistern, and now there are 212 of them. When entering the room from the abundance of columns, it begins to seem that there are a really huge number of them, but it turns out that in Turkish, the word Bimber simply means a large number in meaning 1001, while a lot. Of particular interest to researchers and travelers are the mysterious symbols on the columns which are still clearly visible. Researchers anonymously claim that these are signs of masons who prepared columns for the sister in the island of Marmara. True, supporters of the conspiracy theory are sure that these symbols belong to the Freemasons, who began to use the premises of an abandoned sister for their meetings shortly after the fall of Constantinople. An unusually light sword from the 14th century. And it also happened that ordinary workers cleaning the sewers discovered a sword of the 14th century. Just think, where are we and where is the 14th century? The total length of the fine is 112 centimeters, length of the blade itself is 93 centimeters. But the weight is a little more than one kilogram. Well, how can this be? Such a big sword and such a small weight. The ancient master facilitated the discovery due to the narrow blade and the presence of a thull. When the blade was being cleaned, an inscription in gold was found on it, which had yet to be cleared and deciphered. But one thing is clear for sure, this sword clearly belonged to not a mere mortal. Underground Temple Many have heard about the mysterious megalith of the Incas, but few people know that there is a similar structure on the island of Malta, which introduces scientists to a stupa. The Republic of Malta is a tiny island nation located in the Maltese archipelago in the Mediterranean Sea. Until recently, no one suspected that a huge underground labyrinth temple was hidden in its depth. It was discovered only at the beginning of the 20th century. From the remains of pottery found inside, archaeologists concluded that it was built about 6,000 years ago by ancient people. They hollowed out more than 30 rooms in the limestone and connected them with stairs and tunnels. They contained human skeletons and animal bones, so some scholars believe that the site was used for burial. However, it is unclear why such a large number of rooms were needed for this purpose, so this version remains only a guess. Rooms are mostly round or oval in shape and are rather chaotic. In addition, from some rooms there is a descent to lower floors, going even deeper into the ground. The total area of the temple is about 500 meters square, which is quite a lot for an underground structure hollowed out by hand. The walls of the cave are covered with geometric Metric drawings. In addition, a statue of a woman was found inside. Archaeologists suggested that this was probably the goddess of female strength and fertility, since matriarchy reigned in this part of the world at that time. But the most mysterious thing is not even the existence of an underground labyrinth, but in one of its rooms, the Oracle's Room. It refers to the so-called acoustic structures that ancient people built around the world. These rooms are built in such a way that they allow sounds to resonate at a specific frequency. There are similar rooms in the Egyptian pyramids. Scientists do not fully understand how it works and what is the purpose of such premises. The Oracle Room in the Maltese temple is made in the form of an ellipsoidal niche in the wall. The words spoken there in a low male voice immediately spread all the rooms. They will be heard even in remote corners, but all other sounds spoken by a different timbre are muffled, no one hears them. This phenomena remains a mystery along with other incomprehensible phenomena left to us by the builders of antiquity. Substance 7 billion years old Stardust is the oldest material on Earth from which we can learn about our parent stars, the origin of the carbon in our bodies, and the origin of the oxygen we breathe. Examining fragments of the Murchison meteorite that fell in September 1969 in Australia, scientists found particles of stardust that formed 5-7 billion years ago and is the oldest solid material ever found on Earth. The life path of old stars is approximately the same. They are formed from particles of dust and gas floating in space, which find each other, stick together, and heat up. 
Then they burn for millions to billions of years and die, throwing into space the building blocks newly formed in their winds for future stars, planets, satellites, comets and asteroids, stardust. Luckily, some of these pre-solar grains, that is, solid particles formed before the birth of the Sun, were trapped in the Murchison meteorite, which, where they remained unchanged for billions of years and were eventually delivered to Earth. Aztec technology could help humanity Researcher Roland Abel from the University of Montana, USA, conducted a study and found that the ancient agricultural technology of the Aztecs can benefit the civilization of the 21st century and save megacities from food shortages. The scientists carefully analyzed the technology which was widely used by the Aztecs. They created floating islands on Lake Texcoco, Chinampas. In fact, these were fields raised above the water on which the ancient people grew and harvested several crops a year. During the rainy season, such islands literally floated on the lake. The Aztecs added new layers of earth and fertilized them, and there were no problems with watering the plants. Chinampas provided fresh food to the population of large cities all year round. In particular, they could feed the population of such a city-state as Tenochtitlan, on the side of which the modern city of Mexico City is located. The heyday of technology came in 600-900 AD. However, the indigenous people of Mexico continue to use it to this day. Roland Abel found floating gardens in some suburban areas in Xochimilco. Local residents dig channels and layers of earth are poured onto special platforms. This allows you to reap a rich harvest even in dry periods. In addition, such technologies were found in antiquity and are still found among some people of South America, Asia, Oceania, and Africa. Abel concluded that floating gardens have proven themselves well over their thousand-year history as a highly effective technology that holds a potential solution for the megacities of our time. The use of Aztec technology can help solve the problem of hunger, which for many countries is becoming increasingly important due to population growth. Do you know what is the advantage of YouTube? The fact that the videos are coming out now and you can watch them many years later and they will never lose their relevance. YouTube preserves the video in its original form, as Amber does with insects. Subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone.